Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Finally taking some big boy chips, A-bomb sized chips. This looks like it's friction stir welded because it is aluminum. Of course, you get a little too aggressive and uh, she welds right to your tools. Now this being a, I wanted to pass on a trick what got handed down to me and in the spirit which with it was given, I am forging it on. Off the hop here, what you got to do, head on over to Sigma Aldrich and get yourself some reagent grade sodium hydroxide. Also on the menu, carbide burrs. Now, they have specialized carbide burrs with the proper geography, geography, geomatics to uh, eliminate this, you know, with bigger gnarls so that you don't get fetched up like this. Of course, they don't come in every shape and size. So you always end up using the steel ones for aluminum and you always end up chowdering them up. So you got to get yourself some sodium hydroxide. Unfortunately, uh, prior to that, you got you to gotta take out a corporation because corporations have more rights than you and I in the shop. You, you know, you can't just go order chemicals. You might do something with them. So rather than reagent grade, and don't make no, never mind the, the taste of soap in China. Get yourself some lye crystals instead, just from the usual scumbags. And you're going to want to very accurately dose out just uh, about that much. Careful now with the dihydrogen monoxide, known by the state of cancer to cause California. And me, 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 me. Beaker? No? Nobody? Nobody. <laughs> now this is going to hot up. And we don't need too much of her. A little swirl. Properly attired, bareback and safety squints. You don't want to look like a sissy, especially in front of the safety lady. Ugh. Oh, well, we got that meth cooking over yonder. What the hey, diddle diddle. We're gonna give the a file a try. We'll try this little trick here. I don't know if this is gonna work. Chalk on the file prevents, I've never had any luck with it prevents the galling of the aluminium into the gullet of the tooth. Now we're just gonna file away until we get a whole bunch of chunks in there. Of course, that'll ruin our surface finish, beautiful as it is. And then we'll give this a try, see if we can't sharpen her up. Now we drain, there's a good one, stuck right in there. Now we can't be completely devoid of care. We have to consider that not only will sodium hydroxide digest pretty much any kind of organic material. It feels real slippery if you get it on your skin. It's digesting the lipids in your, <laughs> it's turning, rendering your fats in your hand and the lubricity you feel is actually you getting digested. So not so nice. Aqueous solutions of sodium hydroxide react with aluminum, tin, copper, not so much the irons. So you don't got to worry about that too much, but you got to be cognizant that there is copper in that brass brazing that keeps the carbide on the shank. So I just got a little magnet there to make sure that it doesn't fall over. Of course, we see bubbles of gas evolving. Those gas bubbles are hydrogen, which happen to be flammable. So you want to let this off gas on its own. You don't want to contain that. And basically, it's just taking that aluminum and putting it into solution. Yeah, that worked like a hot damn. Wiped her down, blew her off, like magic, wow, like science. Nothing lends gravitas to any occasion like the proper accoutrements, huh? You know what I'm saying. Even tide having elapsed in the vernacular of our day, she's gurgled and chooched till a minty state has occurred. Some interesting chemistries on here. You can see the effectiveness of it. Hasn't touched the carbide. There's a black patina on there. We'll get to that. And some of the aluminum is still friction stir welded on there. So we see why uh, PVD, uh, physical vapor deposition coatings is so important on these bright, like this is what they call a bright carbide. Um, and that allows, it, it makes it easier for that aluminum to cold weld into the the micrograins of the carbide so what we're doing i'm gonna dork out here you can tell okay it works we need a little bit more time carbide burr oopsie doodle that's why i got uh 
rubber. <laughs> Rubbers are normally for sailors and machinists, apparently. So I wanted to just touch on the chemistry going on here because it's quite fascinating. Uh, full, uh, <laughs> I'm going full nerdgasm, so you might want to bug out. <laughs> grab the bag and bug out right here. We know it works, is what I'm saying. Here's also, there's the file. Clean as a steam whistle. All right. So what we do is we set up a corrosion cell, essentially, and the aluminum is more apt to corrode. So it performs the, uh, the role of a sacrificial anode. Like on your boat, you put zincs on there in order to protect the ferrous elements from uh, seawater uh, getting cor corroding it all to rat shit. You put sacrificial anodes on there. Now, the aluminum, in this case, is the sacrificial anode. And you say, wait a second. If I put a block of aluminum outside in the rain, nothing happens to it. I put a block of iron out in the rain, it rusts all the ratchet. What, that doesn't make a sense. Uh, aluminum does not corrode. Well, here's the thing. It corrodes extremely well, but the product of that corrosion is its crystal metallic crystalline structure is so close in size to the actual metal that it forms a, an impermeable patina. So more oxygen can't get in there to continually perpetuate continued oxidation. Whereas with the iron, the uh, Fe2O3 uh, anhydrous, or no, hydrous hematite, that rust, that crystalline structure is so different from the iron crystalline structure that it flakes off and allows more oxygen to get in there. It's not that the iron is more electronegative or it's more apt to corrosion. It's just the product of that corrosion allows more oxygen to get in there. So furtherance to that, we can see there is a, a patina on there, a black patina. That is a byproduct. And I'm going to go ahead and guess that that is some residual iron, what was in the aluminum from production or some other alloying element, but very likely iron. Uh, and the only reason I know this, of course, is because iron rides or uh, gold I, rides an iron horse. You're looking for gold. You're looking for iron. What you're looking for is shit stains, which is hematite, uh, hydrous Fe2O3. So this stuff is clearly not hydrous, despite being in water, because it's black. And that's also why uh, when you want to do rifle barrels or uh, bolts, you have a, a black patina on there. And a lot of times they use uh, sodium hydroxide in order to aid that process up. There'll be 11 herbs and spices and so forth. So what we're looking at here, speaking of gold is something like magnetite, which is Fe2O4, which is magnetic, hematite, not magnetic. I would venture to guess that this is not hematite or magnetite, but likely anhydrous hematite, which would be mag, 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 mag hemite. I believe it's mag hemite, and that's Fe2O3, same as rust, but it's got a different crystal structure, so it doesn't flake off. You see that? Not flaking off. So, oh, the other thing is, the other interesting thing about this. So you have sodium hydroxide in solution. You get all kind of hydrogen, tons and tons of hydrogen. You get, uh, I believe it's three hydrogens, H2s, three hydrogens, for every byproduct. Now you look at this and you say there's sodium and aluminum and the aluminum in goes into solution. So that must mean that the sodium precipitates out. That would mean that you have sodium metal in the solution. You dry that, you know, that'd be pretty sketchy. That's not what happens because of course, uh, sodium metal explodes in water. That's not what happens. The, because the aluminum is so, electronegative it's so reactive that it actually binds with sodium two metals bind together you get sodium aluminate which is naalo3 if you let all the water uh seep out of it you'd get just a white powder which looks like sodium hydroxide looks like you could reuse it but it's not it's uh sodium aluminate so 
yeah, a lot going on there. But you can see there is some rust. Ah, there's a little patina of rust. So that would be hematite, and that would be the hydrous uh, Fe203. And we can see some also on the carbide. Does that mean that there was some carbon pickup? No, this is so full of nickel and cobalt binder. You wouldn't rust this, but this is just picked up some uh, ferrous ion, uh, some uh, some ions as it was in physical contact with that. So there you have it. Chemistry in use. <laughs> it's almost like we use chemistry every day. Every day. So thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. This is going to have to go in for a little bit longer. It's, it's cold welded right in there. That's a um, good usage case for physical vapor deposition tools. Well worth the cost to put an extra coating on there, I would say.